What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. Uh, so, uh, oh, thank you for all my new subscribers, by the way. I appreciate all of you, and I, I hope you are learning something. Um, but today, we will be speaking about Dwarf Sagittaria. All right, now this is awesome. This is another runner plant. I've been doing a bunch of these in here. And uh, before I open this, um, I, I, I want to explain how you can trigger these to uh, grow quicker and start doing their runners. Uh, you know, because they do go through a 30-day of I'm not doing anything mode. Uh, so to speed that up, whenever you're planting them, if every couple days you go in there and you start trimming off the uh, farthest leaves on the outside of it, that will help start triggering the runners to start coming out a little bit sooner than, you know, than uh, waiting. And, oh, ooh, I got a bunch in here. Yeah! Man, you know, sometimes I buy plants... And I'm just pleasantly surprised. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll open it and I'm like, oh, two plants. Oh, bummer. And then, like today, I open it and I'm like, ten plants. There we go. And this is a carpeting plant. Uh, Sagittaria, it's good for large, even though I'm doing a lot of tall plants in here. Uh, this does good as a foreground plant in a tank like this and or uh, smaller tanks. So um, I've read several things about how tall this actually gets. And I've heard five inches. I've heard six inches. I've even heard someone say uh, 12 inches. So you know what? Whenever I find out how tall it actually gets and it stops growing, I'll do another video and confirm the actual length. Okay. Um, but because I have experience with runner plants before, I do know that trimming them excessively while it's going through that 30 day grace period, uh, does help trigger the, the runners a lot quicker. So let's start pulling this out and having a look here because I'm already noticing, a. uh, although I got a lot of plants here, there's also a lot of things wrong with it. Um, oh, oh, yes, yes. All right. Oh, man, man, I got hooked up. There's actually like three or four layers of plants in here. I'm going to count this. Hold, hold on. Before we start talking about what I already noticed were a few issues, um, let's see how many plants I actually got out of this. All right. So... This is a lot. And this is actually my fifth one that I've, I've opened. I, I had already started planting it in another tank elsewhere. But um, anyway, so the other ones didn't have nearly this many. This one has one. Remember, you always want to separate them. Don't just bury it as one, as one giant clump. Okay. It's actually going to slow everything down trying to grow it as a giant bush. You have several plants, separate them so they can all do their individual thing. Otherwise, the guys in the middle are going to start to melt and decay and disappear. So, you know, if you find some that are connected by a runner, now's your chance to pre propagate before you start doing the later propagation. Um, Oh, all right. So here we go. Here, let me separate these real fast. So I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. Untangle all the roots. Yep, yep. So there's a, this one right here has a few runners connecting them. And this is the pre-propagating, snipping the runners and separating all of these. If you want them to go across the tank quicker, you need to separate each each one. All right, and like I said, anyway, there's a potential of killing it all off if you bury it all as one clump because they do not grow like this. They don't grow right next door to each other in giant clumps. 
Okay, they grow by throwing a runner, and every few inches there's another one. So you need to think, uh, take that into consideration. If they don't grow right next to each other, you shouldn't plant them right next to each other, and you most certainly shouldn't plant the entire cluster together. They're going to crowd each other and kill each other off. That's how it works. <clears throat> No, I got it. this foamy stuff is being difficult, but I, I can deal with that in a little bit. Uh, so it looks like I've got a total here of wow, uh, this is this is awesome. Um, oh yeah, all right, in completion. In that one little bundle that uh, cost me about six bucks, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen plants. That's why you should always check. Take your plants out and delicately actually take a close look and see what you're dealing with. Okay, and I, and I've been talking about this for a, a long time. Every plant video I've ever done, even when you see me on one of my videos from like six months ago discovering for the first time how closely you should actually inspect your plants because um, I have I, I mean one of the very first mistakes I made was taking a whole java fern cluster and trying to plant the whole thing all right so yeah t uh, take a close look and then inspect the leaves like this one right here no good broken leaves Broken leaves and stuff turning yellow. Go ahead and clip it off now. You know, don't wait. Um, and do that with each one. And space these out. Dwarf Sagittaria are going to throw runners out that are about a half an inch to two inches apart. So plant these as such. Okay? And um, as before, as always, trim the roots and then plant them accordingly. All right? I appreciate everyone watching. Um, I got a lot of work to do here, and so there's no reason to film all of this and uh, plant it. Remember, though, when you're dealing with runners, never plant them past the base. Just get slip the roots in, and that's where you stop. Okay? So that's my last piece of advice. Now I got some fun ahead of me. I'm going to get to it. All right, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.